Okay, our new annotation set is ready, as indicated by the ready status. And so now we can move on. Um, so even though we selected for all our species to be automatically identified for us, there will always be some percentage of the data set that remains unannotated that you need to look at manually. So the idea is that, in our opinion, it's frankly a waste of time for the AI to label um, your, your images incorrectly. So what we'd rather do is have it only allow it to annotate clusters where we believe it'll have 99% precision. Otherwise, we, we leave it, you must rather manually annotate those. And so that's always, you know, it'll vary by your data, the classifier, the species you have, etc. That typically is a very small, small percentage of your data set that you then need to manually look at. So the way you go about that is by launching that annotation set for manual annotation for all your workers. So the way you do that is by simply clicking the launch button to launch it for annotation. So you can see there, there's a bunch of different types of annotation tasks that you can perform. Um, the only one that's relevant right now is species labeling um, for the top level labels. So the labels in the top level of your hierarchy. And so because you have um, image clusters, uh, animal clusters that are unlabeled in terms of their species, um, the system won't let you do anything else. You need to label those um, unlabeled clusters. So all you need to do is actually select launch and click launch again immediately. You can edit the batch size if you want, um, but we recommend the batch size of 200. That's the number of clusters in a job um, for, the, for that when, you work, when your workers pick up a job, how big a job is. Um, so it's just a nice unit of work. In this case, roughly about five minutes worth of work. So you do that, you simply click launch, and then um, your seals go into an initializing state. You just need to wait for it to prepare, and then you can, then you can continue. Okay, so now it has finished launching, as you can see. Um, the status has changed in progress, and we can see a progress bar of um, how many clusters have been annotated. So in this case, we have to look at 371 clusters, so in other words, 371 images out of the original 7,500. Um, so now it's ready to annotate, so we can go to the jobs page, and you'll see that it's there, um, shown there as well. There it is, Qualuzi, we're doing top-level species labeling. So all we need to do is simply click Take Job, and it'll take us to the annotation interface. So here we can see our labels. So specifically in this case, our um, top-level species labels, um, along with their hotkeys um, for reference, as well as some other options like multiple species, mask area, and stuff like that. But essentially, all we need to do is um, here's the cluster we need to annotate. In this case, it's only a single image, unfortunately. Uh, but we look at the image and say, what species is that? It's a small and medium cat. So we press the hotkey six, and that image is labeled as a small and medium cat. In this case, we've now um, are presented with this image. We don't necessarily know what that is. So you'll see there's an option called unknown. So we just press U for unknown, and that image is now marked as such. Now we've got a, a nice cluster of 10 images. So we can, in theory, all we actually need to do is look at the first image um, to be able to label the species. Because if there are uh, potentially multiple species in the cluster, the system will alert you, and you'll see that later on. So in theory, the most efficient thing is look at the first image and label that, in this case, as primate with the hotkey P. But if you do need more information, the other images are there, which can be accessed with the arrow keys. And then you can um, look at the other images that are there. Um, and you can see these are all nicely grouped together from the same event, and including the images from the camera on the other side um, of the road. Um, so yeah, we'll just simply mark that as a primate. P, again, this is another primate, press P, another primate, P, P, another small medium cat, uh, a scrubber here, sundry in this case, cat, cat, uh, bird, that, is probably a monkey tail. Primate and markers are known, so obviously up to you. Um, and we've got another um, hare, primate, cat. Um, now we've got cane rat, that's a sundry, cane rat again, a sundry. And there we go. We've got, now got an example of a potential multi species cluster. 
So you can see it's indicated by this thick orange border around the entire image. Um, and if you try and label that, in this case, just as a pig, um, warthog, um, it'll say this may contain more species. Please look at the other images first. So if I press the next arrow, it'll then show us the next image in that cluster. And we can confirm it is indeed only a single species and we can mark it as a pig. Um, in general, the idea is um, uh, if there are multiple species in a cluster, that the, we'll try and show the best representative image in the first image of the cluster. Which is why you need to pick and look at that. And if there are multiple species, we'll try and make sure that includes all species possible in that single image. If, however, that's not possible, it'll then force you to look at the other um, images in the cluster. So again, we mark that as cat. That, I'm not sure, primate. That's a nice one, primate. Actually, that's a good example there. So if you come across an interesting image that you might want to look at later or use later, um, you can add a note to the cluster so you can find it later. So in order to do that, you press, just press enter. And I can add um, um, whatever information you want and save that. And then you can filter and look at that later. Um, we've got antelope, antelope, giraffe, potential multi species. That's still just the giraffe in a position. This primate still. Oh, yeah, this is an actual multi species cluster. So you can see in this case, there are multiple species. And since both are covered in the first image, it's not making us look at any of the other images. And so what now you want to do is go into the multi species mode. So you can see it there, hot key is control. You can see now that changes. Now we're in multi-species mode. I press A for antelope um, and P for primate. And if you want to remove it, you just you know press P for primate again and then add and remove labels. Um, in this case, it's both, and you submit, and they're both labeled like that. Um, there's a primate, um, hyena, and if at any point you make a mistake, you also see there's an option here to go to the previous cluster slash undo. Hot key for that is tilde, so you press that, it'll take you back to the previous cluster, and you just give it a different label and it'll overwrite um, whatever incorrect um, label you had before. Now in this case, I'm not sure what that is. Um, so now we can actually use some of the other tools at our disposal. Um, the hotkeys for which are just covered in the help, you click help, they're listed there. I think it's just the easiest, easiest way to cover it. Um, but first and foremost, you can zoom in, um, which firstly will pull the full resolution image. Um, because it, when you're normally annotating, you get a compressed, um, downsized version of the original image just to be data efficient. Um, but now you can zoom in, get the full resolution image, and then you can for instance, increase the brightness, drop the contrast a little bit and stuff like that. Um, in this case, it's, it's a brown ahina. And then you'll see afterwards the um, those settings have persisted. So you just reset it, and now it can continue again. That antelope, yeah, antelope, I'm sure. Um, here is another interesting example. Um, so that doesn't that, that's a false detection, obviously. Um, so we go to the next image. Okay, there's nothing that's triggered this. So you'll see there's a built-in example called nothing. You just label it as nothing. That's as simple as that. And we've got now um, a branch that's fallen in the road. Um, okay, now it's starting to trigger um, false detection. So um, there's an antelope. And there's another antelope. Antelope. And so now what it's clearly starting to do is just generate a lot of false detections. So what we can do, I'll just opportunity to demonstrate um, the concept of masks, so if you can just say mask area, we have oh, key minus. Um, you can now draw polygons um, or squares, you can draw a square if you want. Um, and then I've edited those if you want using that option there. Cancel the changes or save them. And then you can delete um, and then cancel or save those. Um, but primarily the most useful one would be the polygon. And now you can actually draw. Depending on how well you draw your polygon, um, you can um, now hide or mask that area. So in this case, we want to mask this branch um, to stop these false detections from triggering um, the, you know, wasting our time. Um, 
So normally you'll do this more when it's, it's, it's really frustrating you and large data sets. You can just mark this and nothing and move on. But I just want to demonstrate how this works. Um, so what's worth keeping in mind is that your uh, and, 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 uh, detection is only masked if its entire area is covered by the mask. Um, so in theory, if you're wanting to pick up antelope that are there, you know, if you've masked it, they should still pick, be shown and stuff like that. You just need to draw your mask well so that um, hopefully you're able to deal with false detection as well as possible. And then let's complete the polygon. And there we go. So that's our mask. And then if you want, you'll see the little ghost points if you want to add extra um, detail into it as well. And it's as simple as that. So you can either cancel um, if you've changed your mind or submit that mask um, and continue. And so here's just basically warning that what the mask does. And I'm sure that that's you know, what you want to do because obviously there is a trade-off in accuracy in that you might miss some animal detection by doing this. So you only want to do it where you, you feel it is actually necessary. So you say mask. So then you'll see when you're annotating, generally speaking, you get um, allocated to a site and you work through the images at that site. Um, and so now once you do a mask, that site is taken out of the annotation queue to do some processing and then it'll be added back later um, minus those detections. Um, so now we can allocate it to the new site. So we can just continue, primate. Um, this is actually a multi-species cluster. You can see the antelope up there. I think I have covered everything. The only thing we haven't covered yet is the concept of a knocked down camera. We, haven't, we don't have any in this data set. Um, but you'll find essentially what that does is if your camera gets knocked down and it's facing the ground or a bush or something, it's just spamming photos of zero value. What you can do then is mark that camera as being knocked down and then so all images from that point in time onward are put aside and marked essentially as empty, saying, well, the camera was knocked down, there's no value in it. And then you can look at that, there's a step later on in which you can check um, first image, last image, and then do a bit of a search through there to see if it got picked up at some point and was generating useful data. Um, but otherwise, that's that. At any point, you can save and exit um, if you want to. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to continue annotating until it's complete. Something else that I realized is probably worth covering is just generally speaking, if there is a false detection and an animal in an image, um, don't worry about the false detection, just label the species that's contained in the image. So don't worry about it. Or even if the detection has missed the animal, it's, it's for some reason detected something else, don't worry about it. Just um, annotate the um, the species. Don't overthink it. Okay, and now we've finished our batch of two hundred clusters. So that's what our batch our batch size was. As usual, we get um, shown a notification informing us that our batch is finished. Um, we can either return and go back and make changes and corrections if we made a mistake. I will just simply say done, and it'll take us back to the jobs page where we could take the last remaining job essentially and continue. And there we go, we've come back to our um, masked camera, and you can see we're still detecting antelope um, correctly. Even that antelope there in particular um, is still being detected despite these now false detections which you might note are, are not there. Um, okay, we're obviously gonna got some false detections on the other side still, but we, we can add a mask for that if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's performed exactly as we'd like. Okay, so we finished our batch, so we should be done now. There we go, there are no more jobs available. So if we go back to the service page, we should see that it's wrapping up. There we go. And then we can just wait for that to finish before we continue.